Hi everyone, thanks for being on for the Essential Life series. And today is the second part of Chakras and the Feminine Sacred Body with myself and Ariella Halevi, who's um, co-creating this class with me. And, and just um, a reminder that today's class is part two. So we're covering the higher chakras, starting with the heart, throat, um, third eye and crown and the oils and meditation that go with that and the focus is the feminine sacred body so how those chakras um, present in us as women and are we aware of them are we embracing them to their fullest potential and so Ariella is going to lead us in that part and then I'll lead on the oil that we're connecting with the chakra um, its significance in this energy center and how to use it. And we'll go into a visualization led by Ariella. So welcome everyone. And um, we'll get, we'll just go ahead and get started. So Ariella is going to take over and I'll chime in when it's my time. All right. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me again, Kara. And it's nice to See everyone on Zoom, and it's so fun to be a part of the doTERRA family again. Um, so we're just going to jump right in. Last week, as Kara said, we did the first three chakras, and today we're going to do the, next, the last four. And these are also my favorite, so I'm excited about today. Um, the last three are like the work of life, the physicality of life. And then we're going to head into more of the you know, reason why we're here, our soul purpose and intuition and how to blend all of that. So let's jump right in with the heart chakra. Um, I kind of, I like to call it the heart light chakra because it's really your story. It's the story of how your heart has been hurt and how your heart has been open and seen such beautiful love. It's like your story, right? It's the story of your life, how you, you've gone through so much, but you've also come out the other end with so much. And, um, so when I think of the, the heart chakra as a way to, to really love your body and your sacred feminine body. I think of it as this. Um, actually, I'm gonna give you a story because I just worked with a client this morning on this exact thing. So I'm working with a woman who just wants to love so much. She has so much love to offer, but she has been hurt so often and has so many, so many psychological issues from her, from just different traumas of childhood that she mutes and shuts down her heart. She literally sees her heart as a wall. And what we've been doing is kind of like thawing the frozen heart. But what's happened is that she has separated herself from her body and her heart. So she, she not, she's afraid to feel her emotions, so she shuts down her heart. And what happened is that it also shut down the joy and the, the colors in life. She keeps saying like, there's no colors in my life. And our first session was like really talking about like, well, what colors can you wear to bring out that heart? And so this invitation of the heart center is really looking at in ways, what ways have you muted? Have you shut down your heart? Have you separated yourself from your heart because it's too scary to love? Or you've been hurt before and you don't want to be vulnerable again because it hurts to love. And that's a part of loving your body. You know, our heart isn't just something that stays out there in the world. It's something that is deeply connected to the way that you are in life, your passion, your joys, your colors. And so it's kind of all bound up into our spiritual and physical being. So the invitation for the heart center is to really look at ways that you can find color in your life to, to unthaw you, to, to thaw your heart. So to unfreeze your heart brings out all the colors. I always say like, you can't feel love, joy, happiness, and passion if you don't allow yourself to feel rage, anger, terror, and fear. It's, I know it doesn't seem like they go hand in hand, but they do because they're a part of us. That is your heart. It's all of you. So I could go on and on with this one. I love this one, love the heart. But um, as Kara starts, like I just wanna invite you to surrender to that idea that to expose 
those everything inside of us to ourselves means love and fear, joy and, and rage, all of those feelings. And shining your true light means that you get to experience all that. I'll say one more thing. I was having a really a hard moment this morning and we we're having a hard time with our son. And he's, uh, he's in my heart, like I'm sure all of your children are. And something happened where I just felt like I was shutting myself down and I was so sad and my heart was hurting. And so I decided to find joy. And I went outside in this really fluffy snow that we're having right now and I took my dog and I let him off leash and he tore through the park and I lay down in the middle of the snow and I made snow angels. And it was just like this heart. I just had to combat some of that pain and sadness and just let my heart still be shining. So that's my story. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. I know I was saying it, uh, I have sometimes as a mom with four kids at home, I feel like I'm more in touch with my rage than my joy <laughs> at times. So it's good to remember that um, your heart holds on to all those emotions. And one, I mean, we'd like to live in the reality of we expressing joy and love more, and this is who we are. But it's also good to remember that rage and that the the wide range of emotions is all part of being human and being here and part of these energy centers. Um, but today's focus is going to be how can we raise that vibration of joy and love with the heart chakra. So the heart chakra, I just want to remind everybody on the call again that why we're combining essential oils with the chakra and the energy centers is because essential oils assist in the awakening, the healing, the awareness of these energy centers. Um, uh, an essential oil is the neshama of the plant. And these energy centers are really our neshama expressing these different attributes of, um, of our soul. And the heart chakra, as Ariella said, is our love chakra, our light chakra. Um, it reflects, it really reflects our connectedness to our, our connectedness to ourselves, to others, to Hashem or the divine light that is within us and all around us. And it's really our, um, the mission of this education is for us as women to be aware of this chakra, use the oil that we're going to talk about now to bring more awareness to this energy center so that you can vibrate at this higher level and so the oil that we're going to use is rose and it's um the by doTERRA it's the rose touch so it's it's um in this roller form so it's really nice to use and the reason why we're using rose is rose is considered the queen of essential oils and here we are on this call the sacred feminine the sacred feminine body as queens, princesses and queens, depending on your age and how you want to look at yourself. I'm definitely a queen. And rose is, it's not a simple oil. It's complicated. It takes a lot to create this beautiful oil. It takes a lot of laborers, people going out into the fields and picking these precious rose petals. It takes a ton of rose petals to make rose. And there's, therefore, there's different ways to, to make it. You can, there's what people know as absolute rose, where it's easier to make it because it's um, pulled out through this process using petroleum or gas. So it's not the best rose to meditate with when you're wanting to raise your heart chakra. Distilled rose, which is um, a, a, a higher priced rose, and that's doTERRA's, is where it's it's expressed from the, the flower. And the first distillation, I just found this out in this research is, is it's very volatile, which you think about like our heart and our, you know, it's volatile. It like can open up and be so open to love it, but it can be hurt so easily. And that's how rose is. It's, it's when it's first distillation, it's so light and volatile that it could just disappear like the aroma just goes away so typically in a rose essential oil they distill it twice because the second distillation it's 
grounded, it's hardier, you can smell it, it's not so sensitive. And then they combined it with the first distillation so that the more sensitive volatile rose is grounded with the stronger second batch of rose. And then that's what we're smelling with um, the doTERRA rose. And ours is from Bulgaria, which is where rose is from um, originally. So that makes it a really wide variety of smell. And rose in its character, it gives this sense of security. So I feel in this chakra, like you have to feel secure and safe in order to open up. Um, so rose gives you this sense of security so you can go into this deeper level of connection, connection with yourself and the divine light that is in you and then therefore being able to connect deeper to those around you that you love or opening up to new deeper connections. Um, it's a special gift for women, especially Rose, because it specifically plays into balancing our hormones. And our hormones are such a gift to us, whether the outside world thinks that or not, but it is really what gives us this big range of emotions and passion and love but also keeping it in balance so you don't feel like you're um, over over balanced in in some of your more raw emotions and not your more connective sensitive emotions so it's really great it's in the, almost all hormonal blends but if you're using it um, i use it daily so um, helping it's especially good for the hormonal changes during going into premenopause or menopause um, it is also really special for skin care. So it's in a lot of women's skin care because it's nurturing. It brings down heat. So some of those emotions of anger, rage, and patient is because there's heat in the body during hormonal change. So rose is cooling, nurturing, caring, which are all the qualities that we want to bring up with this heart chakra. So um, on a daily basis, I put it um, every morning and every evening on my face. So I roll it all over my face before, after my skincare routine and rub it into my face. So I'm smelling it all night and pretty much all day. But for today's exercise, we're gonna put it actually anoint the heart chakra. So whether, if you don't have rose, use another um, plant oil like lavender or flower oil like lavender, ylang-ylang, um, geranium is considered the the less expensive form of rose. It's because it's not as expensive and it has a similar quality as rose. So we're gonna we want to smell it and put it on our heart. So if you have it, put a little bit on your heart chakra and whatever oil you're choosing to use, and then go ahead and put a little bit in your palms because we want to go into the breathing exercise of rubbing the hands together. And then I call this aroma pranayama. So smelling into the hands and opening the hands to breathe out. And if you're joining today and don't have the oil, just go ahead and sit back in your chair, close your eyes and take long, deep breaths through the nose long deep breaths out through the nose. If you're smelling your oil, remember to close the hands around the nose as you smell the rose. And when you're breathing out, open the hands to let the breath out. You're gonna stay here for three more breaths. Take your awareness to your heart chakra. And as Ariella said, there's many colors connected to the heart chakra. so. Just keep your eyes closed and imagine what color comes to mind first. And then surround yourself with that color as you take two more deep breaths. And the mantra with this, the, a simple mantra for this chakra is I am love. So for your last breath, you can say that quietly to yourself. And with your eyes closed, just imagine a beautiful, beautiful, tiny lotus flower with eight petals sitting in the center of your heart. 
take a deep breath in and just imagine that you can see these petals dancing around your heart. And just know that this lotus flower is inviting you in, is opening you and inviting you in. This lotus flower is a wishing tree. And this magical tree is said to hold the deepest wishes of the heart. So take a deep breath into your wishing tree. And imagine just like we opened our hands when we smelled the oils. Imagine that your heart is opening and closing with each breath. With each beat of the heart, the lotus flower opens and flows and closes and opens with each heartbeat. And so imagine yourself in the center of this wishing tree, sitting below the tree, maybe resting upon it inside of your heart. And as you breathe deeply, feel the security, safety, and love emanating from this lotus flower, this wishing tree. Notice its roots going all the way down into the earth. And notice that the beautiful petals, the, the tree, the flowers, the beautiful petals on the lotus flower starts to open so much that it begins to receive. And as it opens, your heart opens and you begin to see a small bird fly upon one of the petals. And this petal, is, as well as this beautiful wishing tree, is magical. For as it opens to you, it brings your wishes to Hashem, to God, to the universe, to spirit. And so sitting for a moment, you, the tree, and this bird, imagine what prayer, what wish is at the center of your heart, as if all the wishes and prayers that you had could be formed into one beautiful wish, one beautiful prayer. Allow the opening of your heart to get bigger. Allow your heart to get so wide and so big that it holds your entire world. See the beauty inside of your life, even within the hurt. And as you open to this little bird, imagine whispering your deepest prayer. And then begin watching as the bird takes your prayer and lifts it all the way to Hashem, to spirit itself. Imagine the words of your prayer floating from your heart center all the way to the divine. And know that you can come back to this place at any moment in silence, in nature, inside of your heart. And taking a deep breath in and a long breath out. And just reciting these beautiful, loving affirmations towards yourself. My body, my heart, and my spirit are all connected. I am love. I love all parts of me. It is safe to be vulnerable. And it is safe to love. Taking another nice, long, deep breath in. And just allow yourself slowly, slowly to come back into your room, into your awareness, into your heart, into your lotus flower.
Maybe take another deep breath in and cupping your hands over your face. Breathe in deeply this beautiful scent, this beautiful oil right into the center of your heart, opening your palms, letting your air release and then slowly opening your eyes when you're ready. And so we'll continue with our heart opening and travel up this beautiful tree of life, this beautiful tree of life inside of all of our bodies, this energy. And we're going to head into the throat chakra. I love the throat chakra as well. I call it the, the center of truth, your truth telling chakra. The beautiful part of the throat chakra, which I find so um, inviting, is that the throat chakra is a bridge between our outer selves and our inner selves, and also between our authenticity and alignment and our false selves. It's also a bridge between our lower chakras, our more earthly chakras, our root chakra, our sensual, sacred um, second chakra, and our third chakra, our, our um, empowerment chakra. So the first three chakras are all about our physicality, what it is to who you are as a human being in this world and how to navigate life as a human being. But as you know, even just from being in the oil, essential oils world, it is so much, we are so much more than just human beings. We are actually spiritual beings having human experiences. So I like to flip it and really see when I get stuck in humanness that we are really just spiritual beings. We're just having a moment. And the throat chakra is this bridge between the higher chakras and the lower chakras. It's a gateway. And so the throat chakra provides, um, provides, a, um, what do I want to say, like a holding place for, for assistance in helping us really speak who we are, who we are as a physical and spiritual being. So this chakra is an essential part of our health and well-being. If I, I might say it, it's one of the most important ones along with the root chakra, because when our overall energy system is out of balance, most of the time it's because we are not using our throat chakra in a healthy way. So an unhealthy way would be to not speak your truth and hold it in. If you're somebody who hides from the world and don't, you don't really feel comfortable speaking your truth, or it would be bombarded barding or almost bullying into getting your way. Now, I'm sure we've all been all spectrums, um, but the health of, the, of our bodies and the energy system inside of us is dependent on a healthy communication. It's also, I think of um, the Shema, the Shema as a way of, of listening. And so it resonates me, with me in the throat center because not only is it about speaking, it's about connection, right? It's about listening. So when you're in a relationship with somebody, it's not just about speaking your truth and getting your truth out. It's a dance between um, releasing and communicating and expressing yourself. And then you're in a relationship, so you have to listen. And so it's finding that balance inside of your throat chakra to really listen and hear and see what the other person is really saying. That's called conscious communication. And that's really based in the throat center. So for those of us, and you know, all of us really do carry, um, for, but for those of us that really struggle with this, um, sometimes if you're storing your beliefs or storing your truth inside of your throat, sometimes, um, uh, physical ailments will come out of it. So I think of um, strep throat, you know, if you're a carrier, like if you have a lot of strep throat, um, autoimmune issues, thyroid issues, things like that, things that block the throat chakra. So if you have years of stored truth, this is your opportunity along with what Kara will share soon in her, you know, in her essential oil to help bring that out. This is really an opportunity, especially I think this time of year, A and B, just in the year that we're all experiencing in the world, this is really an invitation 
to practice conscious communication and practice speaking your truth and your beliefs. This is really a time of, uh, of opening, even though we're headed into winter. I know in Israel, it's not as cold as it, well, Jerusalem is cold. But, you know, as we head into winter here, it's really this moment of kind of like going inside. And I think of the throat chakra as like this, you know, what is in there? What needs to come out? And that's the spring where we all come out of hiding. But going deep inside your throat chakra invites this wisdom to unfold. It's a process of, you know, Kara said about being a queen, that the rose is the queen oil. So the heart helps the throat become a queen. A queen is someone who stands in her truth and speaks it, but doesn't shut everybody else down in the process. So that's the invitation of the throat center. So I'm excited to hear what um, oil we're going to discover as we move forward. Okay, so the oil, also considered a queen oil, is um, lavender. Lavender is one of my favorite oils for the throat chakra. And I'll explain why. So first of all, from one of my books I was reading, and lavender is has over 167 medicinal uses that have been researched and proven effective so it already is this like queen in the way that she lavender just know has so many tools for how to um, heal uh, different ailments in the body so i love that part about about lavender um, it's good for almost any imbalance not just the throat chakra but for many many things we could do a whole um, zoom call just on lavender alone um, it's a mood modulator so what modulator means that if it can take your emotions up or down depending on where you need it so if you're feeling depressed, lavender can bring you up. If you're feeling nervous or excited, lavender can bring you down. Um, it can help you to calm down to go to sleep. It can also um, energize you to give you a positive mind and a positive perspective in moving forward. Um, so that's kind of lavender in general, but the specific to the throat chakra is it's, it has it and its name, its sub name is oil of communication. So it is the oil of communication. And historically, throughout history, women, um, you know, in the, in the Torah and, and even in religious Judaism, they say that the women are born with the wisdom of the Torah. That's why we don't have to go to the Bema and read it or do all the studying that men have to do because it's in us. It's an innate wisdom that's already in us. And, you know, in all traditions, when you really get down to the depth of it, women um, in, are thought of as wise and the healer and the creator and the queen. But historically on the outside, we've been pushed to the back. Um, you know, in some cultures, you walk behind your man, you cover up, you don't speak. He's the ruler, he's the king. But yet deep down in almost all cult cultures, women are the power, they're the wisdom, they're the, they're the queen. So lavender is like saying, this is the time to step forward in culture, in, um, in history, and now in modern day time to be like, we are the wise ones. We are um, given the wisdom. We are the queen. Let's take the forefront and speak our truth. So um, lavender, we're going to apply it on the throat. And I think all women from this point forward should apply it on their throat. Um, one of the reasons why is it relaxes tension in the throat um, and when if you have a history of quieting yourself not not speaking when you have something to say or being embarrassed or shy or just not wanting to cause problems or tension um, you can start to restrict in the throat so lavender actually releases tension in the muscles around the throat um, and energetically it's it vibrates with this chakra so that you can express yourself and when we talk about expression Ariel and I we're not just saying like saying the words of communication it's expressing yourself 
the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you look, the way you dress, the way you serve, the way you um, interact, this is your expression. Um, and so lavender helps you to fully express yourself honestly. And we're not saying that every, people on this call, I doubt anyone on this call is not speaking truthfully, but maybe you're not really speaking like who you really are. You're, you're hiding your truth. And so lavender is really about like discovering who you are, saying it, expressing it, and being it. So let's use our lavender. Um, the, oh, one more thing about lavender is like it, Again, like I said, women were born with innate wisdom, whether it's you know our, from our historical culture, Torah and Judaism, or just just the innate way, the the beautiful ways that the world's supposed to be. We are vessels of collecting the divine truth and then expressing it. And so lavender is um, whenever you put it on, just have an image of yourself being this big beautiful purple vase that's just collecting all the divine truth of how humans and the world is supposed to work and then we're we're relaying this information it's like we're messengers of the divine light that's what we are we're messengers of the divine light so let's take our lavender um, i'm going to take a full drop and put it right amount a little circle around my throat chakra here and then I can still feel there's quite a bit on my fingers. So that's what I'm going to use to smell and get the aroma. And remember, deep breaths into the aroma and then release the hand so you can let the breath out. And when you're ready to breathe, closing the hands around the nose again to really get a strong sense of the aroma. And with the next three breaths, quiet your mind and take your awareness to the throat chakra where you rub the oil. And allow the color to come to you, keeping your eyes closed. What's the first color you see? And allow that entire color to wrap gently and with a very nurturous feel around your throat. Like it's just giving this sense of security and a gentle hug and support around the throat so that the muscles around your throat and your neck and even into your shoulders begin, begin to release and relax. And then take one more breath here with this image, the melting and releasing of the muscles. And then just really allow this color that you see inside your throat chakra to begin to dance, to begin to sway, flow and open any spaces that feel blocked to begin to open to another color almost like a scarf or a like a like a scarf is kind of flowing in and out of your throat chakra with these beautiful colors dancing around them and as these colors dance inside your throat chakra Begin to settle into your throat center, giving yourself space, allowing and giving yourself permission to find silent spaces inside of the center, to find your wisdom in order for us to speak our truth especially as divine feminine beings, we need time to retreat into the dark silent spaces of our hearts, our bodies, our souls, our throats. 
And so just notice in your life as you have the scarf dancing through your throat, these beautiful colors swaying almost like a wave in the ocean and asking yourself, how much time do I give to myself daily for silent spaces to receive wisdom? To receive opening and ideas, to receive the blending of my physical body with my spiritual body. How much space do I create inside of this center and in my life to, to really enhance and open to the possibilities inside of me? And as you take a deep breath in, beginning to say to yourself these affirmations of light inside of your throat. It is safe for me to speak up. I listen to the small, still voice within. I am deeply connected to my body and my authentic voice. And so taking another deep breath in and once again, cupping your hands in front of your nose and take a deep, deep breath in and fill your body and your throat center with the spaces of lavender. And then exhale, bringing your hands down and opening your heart and your eyes. And as we travel up this beautiful tree of life inside of us, we're going to head into the third eye chakra located right in between your forehead and to your, between your eyebrows. And this is one of the highest in body chakras to experience your body and soul together, right? So we'll head into the crown chakra, but that's really not inside of our bodies. That's kind of the portal out. So there's a lot of practices. Um, we're both yoga instructors. So there's so many different Kundalini practices to open this center and a lot of breath work also helps to open this this center inside of us but i'm for most of you i'm sure you've heard of the third eye center if you haven't it's really this deep root of insight intuition and inner vision that really all play a key role in our spiritual life it's this really deep rooted idea that like i said before we are not physical beings we're spiritual beings having a physical moment and so through insight and awareness, we can rise above our physicality. If you're, so if you're somebody who gets kind of stuck in the emotions or feels unstable in life, the connection to your third eye chakra is going to help you rise above the heaviness of life and help you see the bigger picture. So I'm someone who's, a, I'm a very emotional person. I'm. Um, you know, I, I work with Enneagram, which is kind of like a personality spiritual assessment of where you are in life and who you are. And I just kind of get swirled around. I love emotions. I, that's what I do as a living. I help women with their emotions. But what, what I work with is to raise the awareness when I help people. We raise the awareness so you can rise above it, so you can find your connections to all chakras in your life so that in your body so that you don't have to get stuck in one area of your shot of your energy body and so through this vision and inner knowing you can really awaken to this idea that you're not just these bones and the skin and this, these muscles they as we all know they age they get wrinkles they get they gain weight they they don't function, they get ill. We, we have all these things that happen as a physical body. But if we maintain awareness in this area, then we can touch into the sacred body awakening that, that we can transcend the idea. You know, you wanna bring your body with you, but you can also transcend to see the bigger picture, to see that there's a bigger wisdom, a bigger opening for you and awakening for you possible in this life. To me, it's an exciting chakra because it means that we don't get to be stuck. 
um, we get to really rise above and find our own answers. So many times, um, so many women, so many people look for other people outside of us to give us answers. You know, we give our power away. That's the throat chakra. We give our power away to other people, therapists, healers, um, partners, you name it, teachers, you can, it's possible, you can do it. So the invitation of the third eye chakra is to find your own answers. And that is what it's, that is what being a woman is all about, is like, like Kara said, is using that divine wisdom inside of you and then using it for good. And so let's move on with the oils. Yay. So the oil we're going to use is frankincense. I know we used it in the root chakra in the first part, but we're going to use it for this one as well. It's um, so frankincense is referred to as the king of oils. So we'll bring a little masculinity into this feminine sacred body um, workshop because I sometimes look at, and I think we all do sometimes look at as um, there is a masculine side to us. Um, so it doesn't take away from our feminine sacredness by um, um, knowing that there is a masculine quality to all of us. And I feel that that, is, um, that comes out in the sixth, sixth chakra and it's our wisdom, our inner knowing, our, our guidance. Um, it can sometimes refer, be referred to as kind of the father energy that is in us or our connection to the father energy, not your physical biological father, but like more of the divine father of um, and creator, um, the masculine creator of us and the, the energy of the universe. So frankincense really recalls the divine blueprint that you were created with, like you were created with this wisdom, this blueprint, this plan that the inner, the divine energy in the universe said, I'm making Kara, I'm making Karen, I'm making Ariella, I'm making everybody on this call with this divine, unique work. And I'm putting them on the planet to do that. Um, I'm not going to necessarily tell them what it is, though. <laughs> they got to figure that out. Um, so this is that chakra. It's like, it's there. And how do you figure it out? Like Ariella said before with the throat chakra, give yourself time every day. It could be as little as five minutes. Um, or spoil yourself and give yourself 10 minutes to sit with this oil and this meditation that we're going to do now. Um, with frankincense on your third eye, sit quietly and just relax in the knowing and allow that message and those uh, information that's in you to, to come into your awareness. And so I, um, this oil is really good for opening us, uh, opening us up again, because women were the vest, those vessels, those vessels of knowing that divine wisdom, and then practicing it in our life, and sharing it with others through our work, our service, our mothering, our um, partnership in our relationships as as wives and friends. So let's um, let's use the oil and, and begin the practice. So also frankincense is really great for the skin. So I think it's important to use it in this meditative way, but use it every night on your skin. After the rose oil that in the beginning of the video, we talked about putting rose on our skin, also put frankincense. It's anti-aging, um, it helps to keep the physical body looking like a queen, but then you're also smelling it and can think as you're applying it on your face that this is also for my divine wisdom. So today, um, let's take a big full drop on your fingers if you have your frankincense or use whatever oil you have handy and do a little circle on the third eye and begin to close your eyes and just be aware of the gentle touch and massage. So physically touching this area helps to bring your awareness and your focus to the third eye. 
And then with keeping your eyes closed, you still probably have oil on your fingertips. Take the oil to your nose to begin to smell and get the aromatic benefits. So we're calling upon this oil to help bring awareness to our wisdom center, our third eye, to let go of all agendas and thoughts of what we think we should see or know and just be completely open to receiving and calling forth the wisdom that is within us. So your mind at the third eye can be almost like a projector, like a movie screen. And at first it's blank and dark. And then allow yourself to see color or images, but don't put them there. Let it come forth from within you. And maybe it won't be anything at first and that's okay. Get comfortable with just a blank slate, with a dark movie screen. It's quietness. Because in this dark, quiet, empty space is where the wisdom has room to come up and come forth. So take two more breaths here with your oil. And as you're breathing, just really allow this center to open to whatever color arises. And imagine that color emanating out from your third eye chakra, creating a portal of light from the third eye and out into your aura, which is just a kind of a deeper layer of your energy right outside of your body. And just allowing this light to penetrate and open to the silent wisdom filled places inside of you. To the deeper connection to all of the answers that you seek. And just really allow almost like you're unlocking a door, allowing the door to open allowing the portal of light to invite you in. Sitting inside this portal of light with maybe your palms open and just allowing yourself to be, to release all of the shoulds, the rules, the lack, the stuff, and just be. And as you sit and be, ask yourself this one question, who am I? Who am I really? And listen for the answer. And that is your affirmation. And with this energy of who you really are, we're gonna head into the last chakra, the, what I call the queen chakra, the crown chakra. And you can open your eyes when you're ready and just take your awareness to this higher purpose, this space right above your head. I like to see this crown chakra or this queen chakra as a doorway. There's like a door that just, just gently opens when it's invited. And it's really a connection of our higher purpose. It's our soul's calling. It's a, there's a the story, I mean, it must be a story and I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know where it's from. Um, 
but there's a story that says that in maybe it's in the Torah, I don't know. But when you're born, the angels, right before you're born, the angels come and they they shush you. They take their finger, your their finger to right here below you above your lip, and they they go shh. And um, that's the indentation we have, but it's also to help you forget your purpose because the purpose of life is to help you remember. So it's like, I think Kara said, it's like this, this, your sole purpose, you may not know, but if you look at your life and your path along the way, we, you've had series of remembering when you've been like, yes, I'm in my space. I feel connected. Maybe it's a deep connection with God that you felt before this, just this knowing that's the remembering. So it's this constant you know, if you look at life as the, I'm, I, you wake up every morning and, and it's this constant like awareness of today, I'm going to remember a little more tomorrow. I might forget, but today I'm going to remember. And so it's a, it's by remembering you are a co-creator with the divine each and every day. And the crown chakra located at above here is also this invitation to remember that when we were very young, we had this fontanelle, that soft space at the top of a baby's head. And so the story says that when, when it, the bones are not fully fused, the babies come out, <coughs> sorry, the babies come out and they remember. You can sometimes, you know, I remember having babies and you could just feel like they're, they're just looking at angels. You know, they just have this awakening and this intuition. And even young little toddlers, they have this too. They, they're just so close to creation, so close to the divine. So as the bones fuse and the skull gets harder, it's, it's harder for them to remember. You know, as our kids grow, they become more human. And it hurts us because we see that they, you know, they're, they're hurting. They have to learn the lessons of life just like us, but you just don't want that for them. You know, you want it, but you don't. And so for us, it's, you know, our, our bones have been fused for a really long time and it's our remembering. Um, so I could go on and on, but for the sake of time, go for it. Let's find out the oil. <laughs> So the oil we're going to use is sandalwood, but before we get into that, just uh, on um, Ariella's last note, the story of the, the opening when the baby's born. I know in many ancient cultures and currently in some communities in Israel, they when the babies are born, the midwives are putting the doTERRA frankincense on the crown of the head. Um, I know in um, the... Um, Demona community, and, and I think there's someone here that has joined the call that's from that, the, the midwife there is putting frankincense on the crown of the head of the babies um, for this exact purpose. Because if we recall frankincense, we used it for the third eye chakra, not the crown, but it can be used for both. And the frankincense is your recalling your blueprint, your divine blueprint, blueprint and not forgetting it. And just imagine if we had this wisdom when all of our babies were born to just keep applying the frankincense to their crown chakra so that maybe their purpose could stay with them and be known and they can have, you know, just imagine if you can just keep hold on to your purpose as a young being and a young child and you mature into that. Um, and um, we're running out of time a little bit, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit. But um, I do want to have a meditation for this one to answer your question. So let, I think it's okay, everybody. If you need to get off, the call is recorded. So get off and know that you can get on, um, look at the recording for the last bit. But we're going to use sandalwood for the crown chakra. And if anybody has new babies come in, into their life and the, their parents are open to this anointing, um, from birth, it could be with the frankincense, um, uh, just to help them remember their purpose and live in this higher state of, I know my purpose, now I'm going to just spend my whole life sharing it and spreading it and not trying to spend my whole life figuring it out. Um, just imagine the life that would be. So sandalwood is for the crown chakra. 
there's two forms of sandalwood um, that doTERRA makes. It, they're, it's native from India and also native from Hawaii. So there's two forms. Today I'm using the Hawaiian sandalwood. Um, the reason why I'm using sandalwood for the, the crown chakra is, like Ariella said, it's, it's an energy center that's not actually in the physical body. It's, um, it's almost as I've, you know, it can be explained in many ways, but I've, um, one way that I like is that the root of the tree is sitting on your head, like just hovering over your head. And then the tree is growing up this huge expansive tree outside of your head so this chakra is rooted in your crown and then grows up into that divine energy source and so you're connected to that divine energy source from the roots um, so very special way to look at it and sandalwood i just lost my place in my book let me just bring it up again sandalwood is a tree and it almost looks like, um, you know, those really special Bodhi trees in India where they're this crazy big trunks and, and, um, and big branches and limbs. So sandalwood looks like that. Um, sandalwood helps to keep you grounded while you connect to the, that divine spirit. Because like, I think many times in our spiritual um, quests, we think that, I wanted to be in my crown chakra. That's my ultimate purpose to be in my crown chakra. But if you're in your crown chakra and one with the divine, you don't exist. You're not in your body anymore. Um, so that's not ultimately what you want. What you want is to be super embodied and, and in your body, but connected to those roots of that divine energy. And so sandalwood helps to keep you grounded, but connected to that um, spiritual um, oneness, that divine oneness. So the exact wording in this beautiful book is it helps to keep you grounded, but close to your divine essence. Um, it's really helpful for any periods of anxiety or fear to bring you grounded and connected. Um, and last thing about it is um yeah many times we feel separated from our divine essence so just sandalwood is one of the best things to quiet your mind keep you grounded and keep you connected to your divine essence essence so traditionally in many um, um spiritual cultures sandalwood is the oil that they use to go into meditation um, especially in Hindu and yoga, Buddhist traditions, they use sandalwood. Um, historically, throughout Jewish traditions, frankincense was the oil that was used in meditation. So either of these can be used for the chakra, but we're using sandalwood. So sandalwood is, one last story about sandalwood is um, back um, when, when man was discovering North America, um, and Hawaii, the, the mountaintops were just covered with sandalwood trees. And the discoverers could just smell the sandalwood from miles away. And just imagine walking onto this gorgeous island and just smelling sandalwood. Talk about a little piece of heaven. You would definitely be connected to your divine essence in that situation. So we are going to take if you have the sandalwood if you don't have sandalwood use your frankincense again for this chakra um sandalwood is really thick so it teaches you patience as you wait for it to come out of the bottle um, and then there's this big beautiful golden drop of oil um and so i am actually going to it's great for your hair i'm going to actually apply it to my crown chakra here and you can just kind of like pull it through your hair give yourself a whole new little hairdo and then it's going to stay it i can still feel the unctuous of it on the fingers so 
Oh, for, for having you sandalwood in so long. I forget how much I love her. Mm, so we'll take several deep breaths here. And as you quiet the mind, take your focus to the tip of your head, the crown of your head, and bring that image into your head of the roots, big, heavy, beautiful roots hovering over your head. So you don't feel the pressure of the weight of the tree, but you feel the essence, you feel the presence of the tree, the bigness of it, the heaviness of it, the the expansiveness of it hovering over your head as if the roots are just um, encompassing and surrounding all the way down to your ears like a beautiful crown. And then with two more breaths, stay in this quiet, beautiful space. See if you can still feel the presence of the roots that have created that crown around your head. And take two more de deep breaths here. See if you can still smell the oil. And then imagine with the roots above your head that right in the center of the trunk of this tree is a beautiful star. And this is your soul star hovering right above your head, spinning, glowing, sparkling. And this beautiful soul star is your divine connection to your highest purpose to God and to your holy soul that you are. And so just imagine as the star spins that again, all the answers to your purpose, to who you are lie just above your head, inviting and wanting that deep connection with you as a physical being, but needing the invitation to come in. And so at the top of your head, right at that fontanelle spot, imagine a beautiful purple indigo light dancing above and within your head. And imagine a secret doorway that only you have the key to that you unlock the doorway and as you open the door every time you consciously open this door this chakra you invite the presence of the divine your spirit your soul your soul purpose right into this space and above your head and it travels like a light from the top of your head and that knowing of who you are and that connection travels down each chakra. So it goes from the forehead, from the top of the head to the third eye center, down with each breath into the throat chakra, down into the heart, spinning and awakening the heart, opening your center of empowerment down into the second chakra, your sacral chakra into the root chakra and finally going down to your legs like two gold posts heading all the way down below your feet and below your feet opens two more doors of chakras and this light goes down all the way into the divine mother earth holding you centering you and loving you and just repeating to yourself, I am one with the divine 
with my spirit and with my soul. And so taking another deep breath in, maybe again, smelling this divine oil. I like to put my hands over my hands over my eyes as I end a meditation. So if you feel comfortable doing that. And then when you're ready, opening your eyes into your palms. And then opening your eyes fully into our group. And so end our class. I'm going to put a couple of links that I messed up with a little bit last, uh, last week. One link is to the chakra program that I offer. Um, it's an online program, lots of meditations, yoga, videos. And the other is a gift for you. It's an, a chakra affirmation, um, kind of like a PDF for you to say or to help your clients with when they're kind of deciding on oils that you can you know, you can give them affirmations, I'm sure Kara has shown you, to help enhance the oils. So Amazing. Thank you. I'll add that to the group. So I'm going to um, open it up to questions. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And um, please, if you have any questions.